Hello everyone, welcome to Pass Appraisal Web Tuition. This is a special session on a new paper that was published in 2018, only a few weeks ago, by uh, Cipriani uh, and others. This is a very important paper. Um, it's, it's been the talk of the town for uh, some time now. Uh, so it's, there's a good chance that this paper could appear in one of your exams. And they might ask you to perform a critical appraisal and answer some MCQs and EMIs on this basis. So let's see some details about this paper. Uh, I want to remind you that uh, the material that you're going to watch now, um, um, I hold the copyright for it. Pass appraisal holds the copyright. You cannot reproduce this material without uh, our permission. It's only given to you as an end user. You cannot share it with anybody else. So in this special session, we're going to spend a few minutes looking at Cipriani meta-analysis published in the Lancet in 2018. This is the paper. The, the title of the paper is Comparative Efficacy and Acceptability of 21 Antidepressant Drugs for the Acute Treatment of Adults with Major Depressive Disorder, a Systematic Review and Network Meta-Analysis by Andrea Cipriani and others. So this is the summary. <coughs> um, I will just take you through the summary. Like I said earlier, there are no questions out there in your uh, exam uh, question bank yet, uh, inclu uh, which includes this paper, but there's a good chance that this kind of paper might come up in your exam. So let me take you through the summary. A systematic review and network meta-analysis was conducted based on studies from Cochrane Central Register of Control Trials, SINAL, Embase, LILACS Database, Medline, Medline in Process, PsychInfo, the websites of regulatory agencies and international registers for published and unpub unpublished double-blind randomized control trials from their inception to January the 8th of 2016. Placebo-controlled and head-to-head -head trials of 21 antidepressants used for the acute treatment of adults greater than 18 years old and of both sexes with major depressive disorder diagnosed according to standard operationalized criteria were included. So 21 antidepressants are compared here. We assessed the study's risk of bias in accordance to the Cochrane Handbook of Systematic Reviews of Interventions uncertainty of evidence using the grading of recommendations assessment development and evaluation framework primary outcomes were efficacy and acceptability we estimated summary odds ratios ors using pairwise and network meta-analysis with random effects in terms of efficacy all antidepressants were more effective than placebo with odds ratios ranging between 2.13, 95% credible interval, 1.89 to 2.41 for amitriptyline, and 1.37, which is um, um, the odds ratio interval, cred uh, the credible intervals are between 1.16 and 1.63 for riboxidin. For acceptability, only agomeladin and fluoxetine were associated with fewer dropouts than placebo, whereas clomipramine was worse than placebo. When all trials were considered, differences in ORs between antidepressants ranged from 1.15 to 1.55 for efficacy and from 0.64 to 0.83 for acceptability, with wide credibility intervals on most of the comparative analysis. So this is the final, uh, this is the result pro 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 uh, provided by the authors. They gave a lot of graphs and pictures, so this is one of the pictures that, uh, that was published alongside the paper. You can see the process of uh, how studies were selected and studies were included. Totally 522 studies were included finally. They also gave this picture. This is a picture that you might not have. This is a graph that you might not have seen in your previous MRC psych revision materials. So this is the first time that you might be seeing this, some of you. Uh, I will tell you more about this graph as we go along. So first question, what is a network meta-analysis? It is a meta-analysis where brain networks are analyzed, social networks and biases are analyzed, 
Indirect comparisons between interventions are made. Service provider's viewpoint is analyzed. Pharmaceutical sponsored studies are excluded. We need to know what a network meta-analysis is. Uh, so, this may be a new, uh, uh, new, new type of study for some of you. You might not have heard of what network meta-analysis is in, in the past. Uh, it's becoming increasingly popular these days, I have to say. Um, so, what does network meta-analysis enable us to do? It, it enables us to estimate comparative efficacy indirectly using placebo as a reference or using any standard drug as a reference, I would say. It helps you to understand the relative merits of multiple interventions. So, uh, in clinical practice, what are the, what are the kind of uh, decision that we take? We decide whether we give patients treatment A or treatment B. We never want, we never think about whether I should give a patient treatment A or placebo. But all randomized control trials focus on comparing your treatment with placebo. You, you, you probably know that already. Most randomized control trials. Uh, compare your treatment with placebo. That's the problem. Number two, almost all guidelines are written on the basis of these placebo comparisons. So the guidelines that you depend on to treat your patients, they also have some problem because they are all placebo comparisons which you don't want to do in clinical practice. So we need a way in which we can compare the two drugs that are in front of us, the two choices we have in front of us. Should I give this patient cotapin or should I give this patient aripiprazole. What should I start this patient on? Okay, You know both cotapin and aripiprazole are better than placebo, but how can you decide which one should you choose? You, if you look at the literature, you don't find any studies that compare cotapin and aripiprazole head to head. Direct comparisons are not there. So what can you do then? You have to resort to what is called indirect analysis. So look at the graph I have here. You will see what I mean by indirect analysis. I have two graphs. Look at the bottom left one here. Um, pairwise meta-analysis stands for the normal forest plots that you see. You take a drug, you compare it with placebo. And if it favors the drug, all the results will be on one side. Okay. If it favors the placebo, it will be on one side, the other side. So this is called pairwise meta-analysis, direct comparison. We commonly do it. When you see a picture like this, you're doing network meta-analysis. You're doing a network meta-analysis. It allows you to do both direct comparison as well as indirect comparisons. Okay, what do I mean by indirect comparison? Look at this picture here. Let's say there are trials that compare olanzapine versus cotapin in the literature. There are also trials in the literature that compare olanzapine with aripiprazole. You know, olanzapine came out as one of the best uh, antipsychotics in KT trial. So it's likely that many trials are comparing their efficacy. Many new, many many companies are comparing their products with olanzapin. Okay, so it's likely you will find cotapin versus olanzapin, and uh, aripiprazole versus olanzapin trials. But your question for the patient in front of you, that patient doesn't like olanzapin. That's tried, tested, and it failed. You have a patient who you have to decide whether to give cotapin or aripiprazole. So what can you do? You can actually now. Even though you don't have cotapin and aripiprazole direct comparisons, if you put it in a network meta-analysis framework, you can have an indirect comparison between the two drugs. Can you see how useful this could be for clinical practice? That's why network meta-analysis are becoming very popular. So this picture is from um, uh, a review written by uh, Stefan Leicht and uh, Andrea Cipriani. Uh, these people are leaders in this field and they have been doing network meta-analysis for a while. So this picture is uh, open access, freely available, you can, you can look at it. Right, so the network meta-analysis allows you to do indirect comparisons and also allows you to study the relative merits of multiple interventions at the same time. So let me now uh, take you through this network plot. The plot that you see here with lots of nodes and, and edges connecting the nodes, this is called a network plot. A network plot helps you to understand how much evidence exists for each treatment. So that's the first question that you can answer by looking at a network plot. Each treatment that you're comparing, what is the qu quantity of evidence? How much evidence exists for each treatment? That's one question that you can answer from a network plot. Number two, you're going to say um, one particular drug works better than the other particular other, uh, another drug. When you make such kind of statements, how reliable are your estimates? Okay, so look at this particular network. Sorry, look at this particular network that I have here. Uh, in this network, 
uh, in this network uh, you, you you have some connections but not all nodes are, are connected you have a lot of connection between warfarin and aspirin so you, you can see there are seven studies comparing warfarin and aspirin and there are a lot of studies comparing warfarin and placebo um, but if you want to compare this drug called indobufen uh, I don't even know what these are but let's just uh, uh, assume for a moment uh, we have a drug called indobufen uh, and we want to compare indobufen to uh, let's say um, Uh, alternate day aspirin okay so I want to compare uh, whether indobufen works as good as alternate day aspirin I have to first make an uh, uh, make an assumption of which one is good based on comparison with warfarin and then see how warfarin and placebo compare with each other and then see how placebo and aspirin compare to each other so quite a lot of indirect indirect uh, indirectness if so if there is a word indirectness it's quite a lot of lack of direction here you know there's no direct connection here so there's a quite a quite a lot of assumptions you make when you compare indobufen with alternate day aspirin this graph i have this network plot is not so well connected there are few nodes that are hanging around on their own those nodes are going to make it difficult to make simple indirect comparisons so by looking simply at the job geometry of a network graph you can come to an idea how reliable is it going to be when you come up with a meta-analytical estimate for this particular graph yes there will be some reliability but not a great deal because it is not a well connected graph it's not so well connected Th these are all in a spectrum of varying degrees this is okay connected not so well connected so your reliability will be little less with this kind of graph the third question you can answer is are some type of comparisons missing in the literature yes I just showed you there are no comparisons between indobufen and alternate day aspirin in fact rather surprisingly maybe I should not be surprised this is a this is a I think a field of stroke or field of um, some other coagulation problem uh, so here they haven't compared indobufen to placebo only comparison that has been done is indobufen to warfarin okay so some type of comparisons are missing in the literature now how do you um, study the anatomy of a network plot basically you have nodes and you have edges okay nodes are the circles the drug is used as a node so each drug has a node okay uh, these are like circles and lines are the direct comparisons that are shown as the edges so these lines are the edges and these edges are nothing but direct comparison so warfarin and aspirin how many times are they directly compared seven times some people may want to put numbers here some may just show the number of studies using the width of the line so the width of the line is proportional to number of studies can you say seven can you see seven is larger uh, line thicker line than something like one one is a thinner line okay so number of trials in each direct comparison will decide the width of the thickness of the edges right with that kind of introduction let's now look at this question what is a network meta-analysis it is a meta-analysis where indirect comparisons between interventions are made it has nothing to do with brain networks the intervention that has been administered to the highest number of participants to the largest number of participants is placebo fluoxetine mirtazapine peroxetine or agomelatin how can you answer this question you can answer this question by looking at this plot you know the size of the circle uh, so okay one thing to know is the, the size of the circle uh, is equal to the size of the number of uh, size of the sample size of the circle is equal to size of the sample the so largest circle is the largest number of participants so you have the largest circle placebo here followed by fluoxetine followed by peroxetine so placebo is the most common intervention used in this study in this uh, set of studies placebo is the right answer for second question third question the head-to-head -head comparison that is most commonly reported among select among the selected set of studies is fluoxetine versus peroxetine and other drugs fluoxetine versus placebo and other drugs mirtazapine versus placebo and other drugs peroxetine versus placebo and other drugs agomelatin versus placebo and other drugs okay so let's look at the uh, plot again uh, width of the lines as you know is proportional to the number of trials comparing every pair of treatment so we have two very thick lines we have this this line is okay well pretty thick peroxidin placebo 
and you also have a fluoxetin placebo line that's pretty thick as well uh, okay so uh, a lot of trials are going into the fluoxetin arm and a lot of trials are going into the peroxidin comparison arm as well uh, probably fluoxetin has much more thicker lines around it one two three so if you put all them all of them together it's very likely peroxidin uh, fluoxetin will win but if we don't know for sure using this visual in information we can look at the table so in this table see 117 fluoxetin versus placebo or other active comparison 117 studies with fluoxetin versus everything else comparison and there are 114 studies for peroxidin versus uh, everything else comparison so which one is larger fluoxetin is larger in number so we can easily choose the answer b the head-to-head -head comparison that's most commonly reported is fluoxetin versus other drugs b okay so this is also another plot that was provided in the paper uh, let's read the question the attached plot represents the results on treatment discontinuation rates for antidepressants which of the following conclusions is correct on the basis of these results so this is the treatment discontinuation data now uh, choice a clomipramine is the most acceptable antidepressant drug choice b none of these drugs are acceptable to patients choice c agomelatin is more acceptable than fluoxetin choice d fluoxetin and agomelatin are more acceptable than placebo choice e no conclusion can be drawn in the absence of pooled results okay so that's that's those are the choices let's see uh, what this is all about first of all let's look at clomipramine is clomipramine the most acceptable clomipramine clomipramine comparisons for acceptability the results are actually on the side of favoring the placebo and is it a significant result it's really hard for my strained eye to see if this is touching this line or even not touching the line so i'm going to look at the um, confidence intervals bracket here uh, is this significant yes it's 1.01 to 1.68 both values are on are on the greater side of one so i'm going to call this a significant result in favor of placebo which means in these studies comparing clomipramine and placebo the winner was placebo placebo was more acceptable clomipramine was not acceptable okay so the statement a is wrong it is the least acceptable of all drugs can you see all of them are more acceptable well better acceptable than a clomipramine even though they haven't made a indirect comparison this is a pairwise plot a simple forest plot so there are, there are no indirect comparisons here there's only placebo versus the drug comparison and you could see clomipramine is, is on the losing side it's not on the winning side when it comes to acceptability let's examine statement b none of the drugs are acceptable to patients well at least two drugs appear acceptable can you see those two blue blue blobs they seem acceptable are they significant yes their lines are not touching the vertical uh, bar their, their lines are not touching the vertical vertical line so fluoxetin and agomelatin are more acceptable than compared to what compared to placebo so fluoxetin and agomelatin are comparable uh, are more acceptable compared to placebo statement d is correct fluoxetin and agomelatin are more acceptable than placebo uh, b is wrong none of the drugs are acceptable is wrong what about c agomelatin is more acceptable than fluoxetin now if you're not careful you may say yes to that uh, agomelatin seems to be on the better side than fluoxetin but remember they have not done any indirect comparison between agomelatin and fluoxetin they haven't compared these two guys and then said the one is better than the other if they have done that then you could say oh yeah agomelatin is more or less acceptable than fluoxetin i don't know what the result would be because they haven't done the indirect comparison so you cannot say you cannot make that statement statement d is without any trouble okay uh, without any problems but statement c is fraught it's a problematic statement so ignore c choose d what about e no conclusion can be drawn in the absence of pooled results so what is this accusation do they not have pooled results yes they don't seem to have any pooled results why is that i think their intention is to show the acceptability of each drug what is the point of pooling all of them and say they are acceptable or not acceptable that doesn't that doesn't mean anything we are interested in comparing drugs okay so uh, pooling is not done purposefully that doesn't that that's not a problem for us okay so that's the two acceptable drugs right so the answer for this is d fluoxetin and uh, agomelatin are more acceptable than placebo okay so i hope that was helpful so this question comes up in the exam i hope you can address that without much worries 
thank you very much for listening to this session as you know uh, pass appraisal web tuition is run uh, four to five weeks before each paper b exam and it's a completely online web tuition course uh, thanks for supporting this course and watching these videos